So I want to be sure that we end on an optimistic note. And if you take my title as a question, I can give you up front the answer is yes. There will be good jobs for humans in the future. The story of machines taking jobs away from humans is not new. This has been happening for, for hundreds of years. If you went back 150 years ago, thousands of people had jobs as matchmakers. I know what you're thinking. We have apps for that now. Not that type of matchmaker. These were making wooden matches to start fires. A very dangerous, tedious, unsatisfying job, I'm sure. And we should be happy that no one has a job like that today. Another way to see the change that technology has brought to jobs is if you look at the fraction of the population working on farms to produce food. 150 years ago, most people had to work on farms to produce enough food for us to survive. Now it's just about 1% of the population. And we produce so much food that we can waste a lot of it and we can burn about a third of it as fuel. So by that measure of productivity, we should be able to have the same quality of life we had about 150 years ago instead of working eight hours a day, working about five minutes a day. That's not what's happened, right? Most people today work similar amounts of time as they were working 50 or 100 years ago. We found productive, worthwhile things for humans to do that are economically valued to keep people employed. The question for today is whether AI is gonna change that. Artificial intelligence seems like a very different thing, and maybe that will dramatically affect the value of human effort. So before getting into that, I want to make sure that we understand what AI is. And we've had traditional computing for now at least 100 years. And what traditional computing means is with the same small set of operations, if we have the right program and if we have enough energy and time, we can compute anything. And a traditional computer takes input, produces output. Inputs can be sensing properties in the environment. Outputs can be affecting properties in the environment. And this vision of universal computation goes back to Leibniz in the 1600s. And he talked about if we can build this universal computer, well, we can have a tool that will amplify human cognitive abilities the way lenses and telescopes and microscopes can, op can amplify human vision. And that vision has come to life. We now have devices in our pockets that are amazingly powerful. And anything that humans understand well enough to describe how to do it, well, we can do it with computers quadrillions of times faster. And it's not just making what one human understands a quadrillion times faster. We can combine the knowledge of millions of humans together to make things that do things that no one human could do. AI goes beyond all of that. And the difference with AI is instead of needing humans to design and program the machine to do something we know how to do. With AI, we just need to have enough data, run a training process, and find a way that a machine learns to solve problems that no human knows how to solve. As an example, if you've used ChatGPT, well, this is trained on all the content, uh, all the language that is easily accessible, some not so easily accessible that humans can create. If you see that little tiny green box, that's Wikipedia to give you an idea of the scale of the training data for these models. Huge amount of energy, huge amount of compute power, and you end up with about a trillion numbers that ca capture in a model the human knowledge that can be extracted from all of that data. And these things work amazingly well. They can ace all the tests that you take in school. They can win the International Math Olympiad. They don't work perfectly, though. They don't really understand the world the way humans do. They don't know that if you stick a unicorn's horn through a human skull, they won't be happy after that. Um, and they can capture as well as amplify biases that exist in the world today and the world of the past that are reflected in that training data. So that's today. What about the future? Well, the wisest thing about making predictions that I know is what Paul Gascoigne said, British footballer, and he said, I never predict anything and I never will. And I'm gonna follow that sage advice. The hard thing about making predictions is our human experience is mostly linear. Things change a little bit each day, and we think of that as continuing addition process. Most things in the real world are not like that. Almost everything that matters is actually exponential. It's multiplying each day. This is not unusual, this is not special. Everything that matters is changing by a multiple. If you look at GDP per capita, 
you see that same curve. If you look at books published, if you look at crop yield, almost anything you look at, you will see the same exponential curve. The scale will be different. The challenge with making predictions about exponential curves, even if they continue, it's hard to predict how far they have to go before the world changes in certain ways and to predict how the world will change as a result. If you look at autonomous vehicles, 2005, we had vehicles winning the dark red grand challenge, being able to drive across the desert completely autonomously, successfully navigating a long course. It seemed like, well, maybe you have to get 100 times better than that to work in the complex environments and be safe enough to be on roads with other humans. Turned out that was not enough. But that led to predictions like the one Elon Musk made in 2016, that within a year, we'll all be having autonomous vehicles driving across the country um, without any human intervention. Um, but that exponential curve continued. We didn't need to get 100 times better. We needed to get 100,000 times better. And now we are seeing autonomous vehicles widely deployed. Um, and Waymo will be in DC next year. The other way to think about exponential change is cost decreasing. Almost anything that depends on technology, where the technology is improving exponentially, the cost is going to decrease exponentially. And if that happens over a period of time, the cost will eventually go to nearly zero. An example of this is communication. If it was 1800 and you were thinking about sending a message across the country, well, no one could even imagine doing that. By 1803, one person could imagine doing that, Thomas Jefferson. And the cost, it's hard to translate to current dollars, was about $100 million to send one message across the country. And it took a long time. Um, by 1900, you had telephones and telegraphs. You could send messages quickly, but it was really expensive. You had to be very rich and have a very important message to send. Today, we don't think about those costs. The reason those costs were high 100 years ago is, well, there were lots of humans involved. Lots of humans had jobs needing to connect wires to make those calls happen. We don't need that today. OK, so almost any job can be automated for enough cost. Any specific job with knowledge of the environment, with control of the environment, you can automate that. The real question is, when will the cost to automate the job be lower than the cost to employ a human to do the same job? And all of these jobs are on curves where that cost is going down depending on the cost to automate and the cost to hire the human, it's going to take a different amount of time before those jobs go away. So what jobs will not be replaced by AI in the foreseeable future? Well, there are some jobs that are still going to be more economical to hire humans for. There are jobs that could be done by machines that are tedious, unsatisfying jobs, but it's more expensive to get a machine to do it than to get a human to do it. We shouldn't want jobs like that. The jobs that we should want and we should aspire to create a society has are jobs where the human matters because of the intrinsic properties of being human. We care about humans being accountable for decisions, so we need human experts that can be accountable for making decisions. The AI may be better at reading the x-ray, but the patient wants to hear from a doctor who understands it, and the decisions about what to do should be made by an accountable human. We also care about things being done by humans. The food tastes better if it was prepared by a chef who was passionate about a food. The music sounds better, and we want to listen to it because we're trying to understand the human musicians who composed it or performed it. And students learn better when they're learning from a human who has passion for what they're teaching and cares about the students. So there's going to be some trauma. There's going to be some suffering as we transition to a new world where jobs are very different from what they are today. But we should aspire to getting to a future where every human has a job that depends on intrinsic humanity. And I'm lucky to have a job like this today. I look forward to a future where I hope all of you will have jobs like that as well. Thank you.